similar with the mutual in mutually assured destruction necessarily requiring that the other side see things in much same way, rather than believing as the Soviets did that they could fight a large scale, combined nuclear and conventional war. In accordance with their doctrine, the Soviet Union conducted large scale military exercises to explore the possibility of defensive and offensive warfare during a nuclear war. The exercise under the code name of Snowball, involved the detonation of a nuclear bomb about twice as powerful as that which fell on Nagasaki and an army of approximately 45,000 soldiers on maneuvers through the Hypo Center immediately after the blast. 55. The exercise was conducted on the 14th of September, 1954, under command of Marshal George Dukov to the north of Topskoy village in Orenburg or Blast. Russia. A revolution in nuclear strategic thought occurred with the introduction of the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM, which the Soviet Union first successfully tested in August 1957. In order to deliver a warhead to a target, a missile was much faster and more cost-effective than a bomber, and enjoyed a higher survivability due to the enormous difficulty of interception of the ICBMs due to their high altitude and extreme speed. The Soviet Union could now afford to achieve nuclear parity with the United States in war numbers, although for a time, they appeared to have chosen not to dot photos of Soviet missile sites set off a wave of panic in the US military, something the launch of Sputnik would do for the American public a few months later. Politicians Notably then U.S. Senator John F. Kennedy suggested that a missile gap existed between the Soviet Union and the United States. The U.S. military gave missile development programs the highest national priority, and several spy aircraft armed reconnaissance satellites were designed and deployed to observe Soviet progress. Early ICBMs and bombers were relatively inaccurate which led to the concept of counter-value strikes attacks directly on the enemy population, which would theoretically lead to a collapse of the enemy's will to fight. During the Cold War, the Soviet Union invested in extensive protected civilian infrastructure, such as large nuclear-proof bunkers and non-perishable food stores. By comparison, smaller-scale civil defense, Programs were instituted in the United States starting in the 1950s, where schools and other public buildings had basements stocked with non-perishable food supplies, canned water, first aid, and dosimeter and Geiger counter-radiation measuring devices. Many of the locations were given fallout shelter designation signs. Conal rig radio information systems were adopted whereby the commercial radio sector, later supplemented by the national emergency alarm repeaters, would broadcast on two and radio frequencies in the event of a civil defense CD, emergency. These two frequencies, 640 and 1240 khz were marked with small CD triangles on the tuning dial of radios of the period as can still be seen on 1950s vintage radios on online auction sites and museums. A few backyard fallout shelters were built by private individuals. Henry Kissinger's view on tactical nuclear war in his controversial 1957 book Nuclear Weapons and Foreign Policy was that any nuclear weapon exploded in air burst mode that was below 500 kilotons in yield and thus averting serious fallout may be more decisive and less costly in human lives than a protracted conventional war. A list of targets made by the United States was released sometime during December 2015 by the U.S. National Archives and Records Administration. The language used to describe targets is designated ground zeros. The list was released after a request was made during 2006 by William Burr who belongs to a research group at George Washington University, and belongs to a previously top-secret 800-pager document. 
The list is entitled Atomic Weapons Requirements Study for 1959 and was produced by U.S. Strategic Air Command during the year 1956.56, 1960s. More than 100 US built missiles shaving the capability to strike Moscow with nuclear warheads were deployed in Italy and Turkey in 1961 in 1960. The United States developed its first single integrated operational plan, a range of targeting options, and described launch procedures and target sets against which nuclear weapons would be launched, variants of which were in use from 1961 to 2003. That year also saw the start of the Missile Defense Alarm System, an American system of 12 early warning satellites that provided limited notice of Soviet intercontinental ballistic missile launches between 1960 and 1966. The ballistic missile early warning system was completed in 1964. The most powerful atomic bomb ever made, the Tsar Bomber, wasted by the Soviets on the 30th of October, 1961. It was 50 megatons, or equal to 50 million tons of regular explosives. 57, a complex and worrisome situation developed in 1962, in what is called the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Soviet Union placed medium-range ballistic missiles 90 miles, 140 kilometers, from the United States, possibly as a direct response to American Jupiter missiles placed in Turkey. After intense negotiations, the Soviets ended up removing the missiles from Cuba and decided to institute a massive weapons building program of their own. In exchange, the United States dismantled its launch sites in Turkey, although this was done secretly and not publicly revealed for over two decades. First Secretary Nikita Khrushchev did not even reveal this part of the agreement when he came under fire by political opponents for mishandling the crisis. Communication delays during the crisis led to the establishment of the Moscow-Washington hotline to allow reliable, direct communications between the two nuclear powers. By the late 1960s. The number of ICBMs and warheads was so high on both sides that it was believed that both the United States and the Soviet Union were capable of completely destroying the infrastructure and a large proportion of the population of the other country. Thus, by some Western game theorists, a balance of RF-101 Voodoo Reconnaissance Photograph of the MRBM launch site in San Cristobal, Cuba. 1962, power system known as Mutually Assured Destruction, or MAD, came into being. It was thought that no full-scale exchange between the powers would result in an outright winner, with at the stone side emerging the Pyrrhic victor. Thus both sides were ditched from risking the initiation of a direct confrontation, instead being forced to engage in lower intensity proxy wars. During this decade the People's Republic of China began to build subterranean infrastructure such as the underground project 131 following the Sino-Soviet split. One drawback of the MAD doctrine was the possibility of a nuclear war occurring without either side intentionally striking first. Early warning systems. EWS, were notoriously error-prone. For example, on 78 occasions in 1979 alone, a missile display conference was called to evaluate detections that were potentially threatening to the North American continent. Some of these were trivial errors and were spotted quickly, but several went to more serious levels. On the 26th of September, 1983 Stanislav Petrov received convincing indications of an American first strike launch against the Soviet Union, but positively identified the warning as a false alarm. Though it is unclear what role Petrov's actions played in preventing a nuclear war during this incident, he has been honored by the United Nations for his actions. Similar incidents happened many times in the United States, due to failed computer chips. 58, misidentifications of large flights of geese, 10, 
test programs, and bureaucratic failures to notify early warning military personnel of legitimate launches of test or weather missiles. For many years, the U.S. Air Force strategic bombers were kept airborne on a daily rotating basis around the clock, see Operation Chrome Dome, until the number and severity of accidents. The 1968 Thule Air Base B-52 crash in particular, 59, persuaded policymakers it was not worthwhile. 1970s. Israel responded to the Arab Yom Kippur war attack on 6 October 1973 by assembling 13 nuclear weapons in a tunnel under the Negev desert when Syrian tanks were sweeping in across the Golan Heights. On 8 October 1973, Israeli Prime Minister Goldema authorized Defense Minister Moshe Dayan to activate the 13 Israeli nuclear warheads and distribute them to Israeli Air Force units, with the intent that they be used if Israel began to be overrun. 60. On 24 October 1973, as U.S. President Richard Nixon was preoccupied with the Watergate scandal, Henry Kissinger ordered a DEFCON 3 alert preparing American B-52 nuclear bombers for war. Intelligence airports indicated that the USSR was preparing to defend Egypt in its Yom Kippur war with Israel. It had become apparent that if Israel had dropped nuclear weapons on Egypt or Syria, as it prepared to do, the USSR would have retaliated against Israel with the U.S. then committed to providing Israeli assistance possibly escalating to a general nuclear war. 61. By the late 1970s, people in both the United States and the Soviet Union, along with the rest of the world had been living with the concept of mutual assured destruction, MAD, for about a decade, and it became a deeply ingrained into the psyche and popular culture of those countries. On the 18th of May, 1974, India conducted its first nuclear test in the Pokhran test range. The name of the operation was Smiling Buddha, and India termed the test as a peaceful nuclear explosion. The Soviet dug an early warning over the horizon radar system was made operational in 1976. The extremely powerful radio transmissions needed for such a system led to much disruption of civilian shortwave broadcasts, earning it the nickname Russian Woodpecker. The idea that any nuclear conflict would eventually escalate was a challenge for military strategists. This challenge was particularly severe for the United States and its NATO allies. It was believed, until the 1970s, that a Soviet tank offensive into Western Europe would quickly overwhelm NATO conventional forces, leading to the necessity of the West escalating to the use of tactical nuclear weapons, one of which was the W-70. This strategy had one major, and possibly critical, flaw, which was soon realized by military analysts with highly underplayed by the U.S. military. Conventional NATO forces in the European theater of war were far outnumbered by similar Soviet and Warsaw Pact forces, and it was assumed that in case of a major Soviet attack, commonly envisioned as the red tanks rolling towards the North Sea scenario, that NATO in the face of quick conventional defeat would soon have no other choice but to resort to tactical nuclear strikes against these forces. Most analysts agreed that once the first nuclear exchange had occurred escalation to global nuclear war would likely become inevitable. The Warsaw Pact's vision of an atomic war between NATO and Warsaw Pact forces was simulated in the top secret exercise seven days to the River Rhine in 1979. The British government exercised their vision of a Soviet nuclear attack with Square Leg in early 1980. Large hardened nuclear weapon storage areas were built across European countries in anticipation of local US and European forces falling back as the conventional NATO defense from the Soviet Union, named REFORGER, was believed to only be capable of stalling the Soviets for a short time. 1980s montage of the launch of the Trident C-4 SLBM and the paths of its ring trivicles dot in the late 1970s and, particularly, 
during the early 1980s under UDOTS. President Ronald Reagan, the United States renewed its commitment to a more powerful military, which required a large increase in spending on U.S. military programs. These programs which were originally part of the defense budget of U.S. President Jimmy Carter, included spending on conventional and nuclear weapons systems. Under Reagan, defensive systems like the Strategic Defense Initiative were emphasized as well. Another major shift in nuclear doctrine was the development and improvement of the submarine-launched Nuclear Armed Ballistic Missile, or SLBM. It was hailed by many military theorists as a weapon that would make nuclear war less 